I've noticed uh, having worked with people from the millennial generation, uh, having children who are, some children who are part of it, and a daughter who is lower than, younger than, um, that part of this profusion of identities and ideas can mean a hesitancy to commit uh, to something that seems like it might confine your evolving identity. So, for example, um, among religious communities, people feel like, I don't know what I believe yet, or I know a little of what I believe, and I don't want to join something where there's a whole list of stuff that I have to believe before I can become a, a part of this community. Now, that's often an error, the idea that you have to absorb everything, but people feel that way. And similarly, political parties are fading because people feel like there's so much to believe in the world. Why would I affiliate with a group of people who seem to hold a very uh, inflexible set of views and are always sure they're right? And so, in a weird way, that autonomy is undermining institutions of common behavior or common belief that have been a backbone of society for a long time. Um, we'll see what comes of that. To me, it seems a little alarming, but that's because of I, I grew up in a time when I looked around at the different institutions and I decided which were the ones on balance I wanted to affiliate with. And I didn't think of myself as continuously inventing a new way of living just in my, all by myself. But um, uh, I, I think that there's a danger of maintaining a fluid identity for too long because you're somehow feared, you're somehow afraid that uh, attachment and commitment will cause you to be embarrassed or make a mistake or to violate some inner sense of integrity that you're trying to maintain. Part of the risk of growing up is that you have to make commitments to people, to things, to directions, to, you can't hold back forever. And so um, I, this is going back to the sense of each person having to take seriously the idea of finding a path. And there seems to be a little too much, for my old person's, a little too much passivity. The path will find me. But um, so, again, to fall into religious language, this is, um, this is where I think you need a practice. And in talking about faith and money, I talk about gifts of grace or practices that help you zero in on what you want to do, or what you, who you want to be. And one is pursuing simplicity, trying to bring as much simplicity to your life as you can. Second, balance, trying to bring balance to your life, whether it is in time or money, so that you know, you're not way over here, way over there. The third thing is what I've already spoken about, wisdom, the ability to see past the illusion, the illusion presented to you by a person or the illusion presented to you by a product that's being marketed. And the last one is generosity, that when people are made to feel uncomfortable because they don't have enough, and therefore made to feel that we live not in a life of abundance, but a life of scarcity. The antidote to that, oddly enough, counterintuitively, is to give things away. And the more you give away, the more you realize you do have plenty, and that you live a life of abundance, and that all the people who are self-interested in making you terrified that you don't have enough are not seeking you, the good for you. They're pursuing another agenda. So. So I'm not quite sure I answered your question, but the sense of, of helping people to engage in a process in which they locate their authentic selves in this complicated, swirling, noisy life, that's a huge task. In some ways, it's easier than ever before because you can scan and find stuff and, you know, it's almost like, um, you know, the dating apps where you just switch. Ah, Buddhism, no. Catholic Catholicism, no, this, that, and that. But, um, but it's harder because there's so many options. But, you know, I, I think that, I mean, I've worked with a lot of younger people, and what is remarkable is they seem to uh, contain at the heart of themselves the desire that their lives 
should be lived with meaning and direction. And that they're not willing to sacrifice a lot of other things. They want to make sure they maintain meaning and direction. And that may be the salvation of our world. I certainly hope so.